in my mind, it's a dual meet between Ingebrigtsen and Hoar. Oliver Hoare, though, man, like, I think he needs to he needs to time when he surprises the world. And I feel like <laughs> if he were to win this race, it would not be good for his world championship medal potential. I mean, world championship oh, gold a, potential. So I think he needs take. to make sure he doesn't win the race. Coming. You got to save yeah. your wild win for the world championships, not for the Oslo Diamond League. So if you feel like you have it, hold back. And no, finish that. Like, let Ingelbertson have, like, all right, I'm still the guy, still the king of the 1500. Let him have it. But you know, over these four weeks, you have a little secret. And that secret is you usually would have won. And then you unleash it in the world championship final. And you catch him by surprise. Because if he ha- if Ingelbertson mm. has his momentum, this mojo, 100 meters to go, and he's in the lead, he's going to be like, no one's catching me. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm good. Smooth sailing, another goal. So you, you give him false hope of optimism. That's what you do, Oliver Hoare. Run for second. That's my free coaching advice for Oliver Hoare. So in order to win gold, you must first lose in Oslo. Yes. That's Gordon's advice. Yeah, that's terrible advice. I like how you're thinking beating Ingebrigtsen would be a bad thing. Let's give him false hope. The guy who's the number one ranked miler in the world. I think he's got a lot of hope already. I don't think that'll change it at all. Uh, I disagree with you. I think he's trying to win because that would be a huge moment in his career. And it would be a step up because right now he's in that group of guys we think of as, as challengers, but he hasn't done it yet. And I think the more people who beat Ingebrigtsen, which what this year is just Tefera indoors, right? And then obviously Cherry has beat him a bunch and beat him at the end of last year. So I'll, I'll count him in that as well. But the more people who beat him, I think the confidence builds within the group around them that, hey, this guy, we can get this guy, even though Ingebrigtsen seems to be just getting better and better every year. But this is going to be a tall order at home. And they run similar types of races too. Like they both are not afraid of leading and pushing from far out. So I think that neutralizes Hor's uh, ability to win a bit just because you think, well, there's no style of race that can develop. It's like giving him uh, a clear advantage because because they're pretty similar just in terms yeah. of the type of race that they want. But yeah, I think he should try to win the race. That's usually my philosophy. I'm going to hold down with my philosophy. I think he should try to lose the race. You should try to win in your head, but lose physically. You know? Set yourself up for the surprise of the century in Eugene four weeks from now. Still go out and run well. Run your 349. So you show that, you know, you're not, don't go out there and run 401, whatever. But yeah. I mean, what, what, that would be (laughs) interesting. Just, just get the win so he knows you're beaten, but then jog the last 10 and have him pass you. (laughs) Give away the money and the fast time. Yeah, give away the money. All right, that's not going to happen.